If you want to enable a connection between your VPC and other AWS services like S3 and DynamoDB, but you want that to be private and you don't want to use Direct Connect or Gateways or VPN, then we might need something more, isn't it? Thanks for joining in today and let's talk about VPC endpoints. So if you're ready, let's begin. And in today's session, we will be talking about what are VPC endpoints, what are the different VPC endpoints that we have like interface or gateways, and we'll do a short hands-on demo for VPC endpoints as well. As always, the timelines are in the description below, so please make sure that you check them out. So let's begin. So it's been a really long time we have seen the roadmap for VPC, and let's get an overall picture of what we have already completed till now and what is still pending. So we have almost covered all the important aspects that we need for VPC, but we still have a few more left, which should not take much time. And now let's get, it's a very good thing for us. So as you can see, we have already completed an ACL, route tables, NAT gateways, security groups. And the next thing that I felt was important was VPC endpoints. So that is what we are going to discuss today. So the biggest question here is what is a VPC endpoint or what are VPC endpoints, isn't it? Uh, so VPC endpoint enables private connections between your VPC and supported AWS services and VPC endpoint services powered by AWS private link. For now, just ignore the last part here. We will have a separate topic altogether for private link. So don't worry about that. And the best part is that a VPC endpoint does not require an internet gateway. NAT device, VPN connection, or even an AWS Direct Connect connection as well. Along with that, they are horizontally scaled, redundant, and highly available VPC components. And as I already told you, that this is going to be a private connection. And instances in your VPC do not require public IP addresses to communicate with resources and the services because it remains as a private connection. And there are two types of VPC endpoints that we have. So the first one is interface endpoints and the second one is gateway endpoints. So don't worry about that. We will talk about them in detail. But what is that comes to your mind when you think of an endpoint? You know what's the dictionary meaning of endpoint? It says the end of something or something that you are trying to achieve. In a general sense, you can say sentences like, I don't feel like I am at an endpoint or even at a midpoint in my career or something like we have reached an acceptable endpoint in this litigation. So an endpoint can be termed as something that gives you a perspective of a state or entity for you to reach to a conclusion and you might as well get the result or response back. But when it comes to the computing world, we mostly think of an endpoint as it could be an interaction point for communication or it can be a URL or one end of the communication channel or it could be a URL where your service can be accessed by the client application. Just keep this in your mind that an endpoint could be a URL where your service can be accessed by the client applications. And I think you are getting an idea of what we are moving forward with. So let's check that out. So when we speak about interface endpoints, remember that the interface endpoint uses an elastic network interface to create our VPC endpoint connection. So it's very easy to remember this way, like interface endpoint uses elastic network interface, isn't it? I know it sounds dumb, but if you have to recall things instantly, try connecting the dots. Now you know what the context is, let's talk about this in detail. So if you see the visual on the right hand side, in the case where if I did not have an option for VPC endpoints to privately access Kinesis data streams, I would obviously make use of the internet gateways and I would use the default DNS name of the AWS service for that, which is in this case is kinesis.us-west-2.amazonaws.com. And that is what my instance is going to use. So now let's change things. Now that AWS has provided us with an option to access Kinesis data streams privately by creating VPC endpoints, that actually solves many of our problems. Now let's come back to the VPC endpoints. So an interface endpoint uses an elastic network interface or ENI as you can see on the diagram as well and a private IPv4 address. 
this private IP address is taken from the IP address pool of your subnet and will be used for the ENI. And this serves an entry point for traffic which is destined to, to a supported AWS service like Kinesis or a VPC endpoint service. And VPC endpoint service, which is one more very important service which makes use of the network load balancers. And we will discuss this in AWS private link. Don't worry about that. But where we will try to join a VPC endpoint service and a VPC endpoint and create a private link connection between VPCs. And moving on with interface endpoints, you can talk to AWS services without having the need to use the NAT gateways or devices or virtual private gateways. So coming back to the visual again, once you've created the interface endpoint using the Elastic Network interface, now our instance can access the Kinesis data streams privately using the endpoint specific DNS host name, which is VPC-123, that is going to be VPC ID dot Kinesis dot US hyphen West hyphen two dot VPC E, which is VPC endpoint dot Amazon AWS dot com, which uses the private IP from the subnet of your VPC. And if you wish to use the private DNS, we need to enable that. So let's enable that. And in order to enable the private DNS, you must set the following VPC attributes to true. One is enable DNS host names and the next one is enable DNS support. And in this way, if you don't want to use the private IPs or the IP address, and if you want to use the DNS names, you can as well use that. So now let's talk about the second type that is the gateway endpoints. So a gateway endpoint is basically a gateway which you specify as a target for a route in your route table, whose destination is pointed to the AWS service. It's very simple. So we create the VPC endpoint and add that to the route table as a target in order to access the AWS service. But you need to remember that gateway endpoints are supported for only the AWS services and they are Amazon S3 and DynamoDB. And if you see here, we have the subnet A, which is associated with the internet gateway, which helps it to connect to the Amazon S3. But if you see the second subnet, the subnet B has a route to the VPC endpoint ID, where the destination is Amazon S3 service. So even though it doesn't have an internet gateway, it is able to access the AWS service, of course, with the help of the VPC endpoints. So remember one thing very carefully, that the interface endpoint uses the elastic network interface and the gateway endpoint uses the route table for routing and traffic redirection to access the AWS service. And that is private. And if you see the route table as well here, so the subnet one or the subnet A has the local redirection towards the CIDR block for the VPC and all the internet facing traffic has been directed towards the internet gateway. And the subnet B that you have, if it wants to access the Amazon S3, so we have the prefix list ID for Amazon S3 and the target is obviously VPC ID. I hope you will remember this, that the interface endpoint uses the elastic network interface and the gateway endpoint uses the route table for routing and traffic redirection to access the AWS service. And that remains private. Okay, so now let's start off with the VPC endpoint demo. So for this, what you need to do is, so what we need exactly here is, we need a public instance where we can actually connect to the internet gateway and to the internet and access our S3 buckets. So this would be one way to do it. But the other one that we wanted to do was the V2 instance that you see here, which is basically our private instance. It should be able to access the S3 bucket using the VPC endpoint. That is our main goal. So let's have one public instance and one private instance and we'll see the differences between them as to how we can connect to the S3 buckets. So let's go back to the console and just see that. So this is my EC2 console and I have a public instance already created and a private instance. I have already created that. So I'll connect to my public instance and I'll show you how we can connect to the AWS S3. So go to the terminal and I'll quickly connect to the instance. So this is my public instance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type AWS S3 LS. So AWS S3 LS is basically a listing of all the buckets that you have. So by default, it just lists all the S3 buckets. Okay, so if you face this issue, it means that you don't have enough permissions to access the S3. So what do we need to do? We need to add a role and a policy to this 
EC2 instance that I have. So to do that, what you need to do is you need to go back to the instance. So this is the instance that I have and go to security and modify IAM role. Here, if you can choose one from the drop down. So if you have a full S3 access policy already existing or the role already existing, then you can assign that. If not, then you have to create a new one. So I'm going to show this, show you how to create one. So here, once you click on create new IAM role, you'll go to the management console for IAM. Here you have an option for create role, isn't it? So just click on this. Here you have like four options. So AWS, either you can create it for AWS service or another AWS account or a web identity or SAML federation. So this is basically for your authentication, single sign on authentication. But here we have two options. Now the common use case that you can see here is EC2. So if suppose I want to allow any service to be accessed from the EC2 instance, I have to create a role for the EC2 instances. So if you click on this one and click on next, so you can see here all the existing policies it'll take some time to load so you can just type s3 here and you can see here a lot of s3 policies already there so we have s3 access policy isn't it so if you can just expand this you will be able to see the json format so what it is saying is you have action of s3 star and you have access to all the resources so what happens here is you can do a list object, get object, put object, delete object, anything if you have all the permissions. If you select this and you click on next, you can add the name of the tag that you want and you can just review this. You can add the role name. So I have already created a Amazon S3 full access. So I won't create it, but you can do it by adding a name here. And once you create the role, you will be able to see it. When you refresh this, you will be able to see that in the list of roles that you have. It's very simple. So once you have this, once you've created that, you can just come here and you can just select the role that you have just recently created and just save this. So now you can just see if you see here, we have attached the IAM role. That is full S3 access. So don't worry about this. So now once we go back to the console again or the terminal again, and we can just do a AWS S3 LS we'll be able to see the list of buckets that we have. So this path is clear for us because this is a public instance and I'm able to access it through the internet gateway. And with that, I am able to access the S3 buckets. So not a problem. I'm able to do this. The next thing that I want to do is I want to have my private instance also being able to connect to the S3 buckets using the VPC endpoint. So we'll do that. First of all, let us just connect to the private instance and see that it is not working. So that's one important thing that we need to do. So if you go to the private instance and just let us copy this private instance and uh, IP address and just let us connect to this. So I have already copied my EC2 key here in my home directory. So if you so if you see this EC2 key hyphen pen, so I can just connect the same using the same EC2 key. I have already shown this how to do it in my previous episode so i think by now you all are pretty much aware of how to do this so not a problem so now you are able to connect to the private instance and the same way the way we did it for aws s3 ls to list down the objects or the buckets we'll do that okay so we can configure the same for the private instance and i can just go to security and modify the im role like the full s3 access and save it and just we'll do this once again but this won't work because it's a private instance and we cannot access AWS S3 from here. It'll basically time out. So don't worry about that. But if you want to see what is going on in the background, what you can do is you can just do a control Z and you can just type debug and you can just execute the same. And you can see here, it is just stuck at this position. So not a problem. We are not able to connect to this. And that is what the problem is that we are trying to solve here. So the next thing that we wanted to do was we have to create the VPC endpoint. So to create the VPC endpoint, what we need to do, we need to go to your VPC console. Here you can see the option of endpoints. Okay. So this is the place where you can create your VPC endpoints. So there are no VPC endpoints created as of now. So you can just click on create endpoint. 
and here you can see a VPC endpoint allows you to securely connect your VPC to another service an interface endpoint is powered by private link and uses an elastic network interface as an entry point for a traffic designated or destined to a service so that we have already discussed so not a problem and a gateway endpoint serves as a target for a route in your route table for traffic destined for a service so this is also already discussed so not a problem the service category that you see here there are three ways you can actually create the endpoint so one is for the AWS services or you can just find it by the name that you want to have or you've given already or you can just go to the marketplace but for now what we are doing is we are going to just create an interface for the S3 so you can just type S3 so if you see here we have the type AWS S3 as gateways I'll just close this and I'll show you if you see most of the services that you see here have interface but only DynamoDB I think and uh, yeah and S3 will have gateways wait I'll just type so DynamoDB is gateway S3 is gateway so if suppose I want to connect to S3 I want to create a VPC endpoint for S3 then I need to obviously go for the gateway type isn't it just type S3 and select this and what is the VPC ID we have my VPC demo and here you want to associate it with you have to associate it with your private subnet isn't it you will get a PL or the prefix list I already told you that you will get a prefix list ID so now what it is saying is it will automatically add a route where the destination is the prefix list 78A54001 this is the prefix list ID for Amazon S3 to the target and it will assign it as a target for the endpoint ID that we have for the VPC endpoint and it will add to the route table so you don't need to worry about this and warning it has already shown you the warning when you use the endpoint the source IP address from your instance is your affected subnets for accessing the AWS service in the same region with the private IP address not the public IP address yes we already know this because we know that when you create the endpoint we want to have a secure connection on the private connection here you can have either a full access or a custom access you can just click on custom and write the policy you can also click on policy creation tool to generate a policy for yourself and paste it here so here we'll be giving the full access so don't worry about that just you need to come down and add a tag okay so i have given this and i don't think so there is anything left for us to do just create the endpoint yeah so we have successfully created the vpc endpoint now just close it as you can see this is the main route table for the my vpc demo and here it has been added like pl78a54001 and this is the vpc id that we have already created just now created so if you come back here you can see adbe8 and this is also adbe8 so now what happened is we have created vpc id or the vpc endpoint and this endpoint has a service association with your amazon s3 so this has a policy which allows you to connect to the S3 and it allows you to access AWS S3 and perform the operations that you want. So now that we have added everything and the route table and everything, then what we need to do is we need to just type AWS S3 LS. And as I had already told you that this may not work because the region that is specified by default is US East 1. So if you want to access it, you need to just specify region and the region that you have the content so i have it in ap south one so you can just write this and just click on enter or hit enter so now that you have access to amazon s3 from your private instances using the vpc endpoint you are able to access the buckets that you have and you are able to list them out as well so let's go back to the diagram once again and we'll see that whether we have been able to achieve what we wanted so if you see here we have created the vpc endpoint and the route table that we had we have added the prefix list id for the amazon s3 which has the target to the vpc id so anything that wants to try to access to the amazon s3 cider block will have to go through the vpc id so this we have already done and that is why our instance at the private subnet is able to access the s3 buckets that's interesting isn't it so that's it from my side today i hope you liked it and if you did you can support me on Patreon 
or PayPal or Insta Mojo. The links are already in the description below. So until then, it's Pythonic signing off.